Hello to everybody. Well, now we're going to start. So welcome everybody to this webinar called NRIS uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean. This is the IGF recession. Uh, well, just to explain you, uh, we're going to, to do this webinar uh, in, in this platform and the, our guest speakers are Carolina Aguerre and Valeria Bentancur. Uh, but now uh, my colleague, Keon Swift from Lagnit is going to explain you a little bit more. I just want to explain how we're going to do this webinar. First, uh, our, um, uh, our guests are going to do a, a presentation about their topics and all the questions. Uh, you can do, uh, you can write them, write them in the bottom that says uh, questions. Uh, and also you have another bottom that says um, chat. There you, it's uh, like a forum, you can uh, put any comments you want and participate there. Uh, all the questions will, will be read out loud uh, at the end of the presentations. And if you want to speak or say something uh, out loud, you can uh, click on the button that shows a raising hand and we will give you uh, the word to speak uh, in the microphone. Uh, I would also like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and we will share uh, the recording then with all of you and it will be also be published in, on our website and this is uh, i'm going to share with you the link where the session will be uh, published this is the link we're going to share with you in the chat too uh, and well that will be everything i will give the word now to kevin swift uh, also from Lagnik, and he will introduce uh, you to all the speakers and the rest of the information of the webinar. So go ahead, Kevin. Great, thank you very much, Janina. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar titled NRIs in Latin America and the Caribbean. As Janina explained, this is a LAC IGF pre-session, meaning that we are going to use this opportunity as a primer to introduce this topic and eventually continue with a face-to-face -face session that we are convening during the LAC IGF meeting in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The LAC IGF will be held from the 31st of July to the 2nd of August in Buenos Aires, and we will convene the face-to-face -face meeting on this topic on the 2nd of August. As Janina has mentioned, my name is Kevin Swift. I'm Head of Strategic Relations and Integration at LACNIC. And we are one of the entities that have been convening this session on behalf of the technical community. I would also like to acknowledge my other co-conveners at this point, Ms. Raquel Gatto, who is the Regional Policy Advisor at the Internet Society, and also Mr. Miguel Ignacio Estrada, the General Manager of LACTLD. The objective of this webinar is to synthesize the multi-stakeholder community about opportunities and challenges that national and regional IGF initiatives face. To do so, I am flanked by two very special guest speakers. We have Dr. Carolina Guerre from the University of San Andres in Buenos Aires, and we also have Valeria Betancourt, Ms. Valeria Betancourt from the Association for Progressive Communications. We're gonna start with a presentation from Dr. Aguirre, Carolina, and a little bit more about Carolina. Carolina has served as the principal investigator, um, and she's also a lecturer at the University of San Andres, where she is co-director of the Center for Society and Technology and also academic director of the Diploma in Internet Governance at that university. She holds a doctorate in social sciences by the University of Buenos Aires. She has also participated in several processes linked to internet governance at a global level and at a regional level, including the IGF MAG between 2012 and 2014, 
ICANN, LACTLD, the Steering Committee of LACIGF, among others. She has published on several aspects of internet governance in the region, including its institutional dimension, the management of critical resources, and problems or challenges that affect access to the digital economy. I'd like to hand the session over now to Carolina to lead us through her presentation on her work on mapping national IG initiatives in Latin America. Thank you, Kevin. Um, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on in which time zone you are now. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be sharing um, some of the findings that um, uh, we, we have uh, researched with uh, other colleagues, um, in this case from uh, Nick BR, uh, and uh, the London School of Economics, um, the full list of, um, of researchers who participated in, in this um, uh, regional uh, study that we conducted <coughs> between September 2017 and May 2018. Um, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether you are able to see the, um, the slides. Um, uh, Janina or uh, Kevin, can you help? I, I'm I'm not sure whether the participants are seeing the slides that I was sharing. Uh, not yet, Carolina. You have to share. Uh, click on sharing, and you will be able to share your presentation. Well, because I added in that mode, and then sorry. <coughs> So I'm sorry, but it has something has frozen on my screen. Um, I will start talking. Um, I, I don't know whether you can upload the presentation because um, I'm unable to get out of the Zoom uh, application at the moment to upload the. Yeah, thank you. There we can see your screen. Okay. Uh, we got the presentation. Great. Thank you. Yes. Now, now I'm able to see it. I, I don't know. There's something wrong here. But thank you very much uh, for the help. So um, the study that I'm going to present uh, briefly in this presentation is, is called Mapping National Internet Governance in Initiatives in the LAC Region. And it was a project sponsored by the Internet Policy Observatory at the University of Pennsylvania, with the regional partners being um, the center I work for at the university and San Andres and uh, Nick PR. And uh, this is the research team um, in alphabetical order, uh, myself, Diego, Agustina, Calegari, Luis, Farrell, and Natalia Sauchuk. Um, you, many of you might know uh, some of these uh, names or uh, since, well, they are also participants in the, um, in the IG ecosystem in their, respective roles um, and uh, well what what we did uh, last year was to start with the um, uh, field work uh, connected with this uh, with this research who, uh, whose aim I'm, I'm sorry can you I'm having a bug problem in my computer I can't thank you. <laughs> Um, so the, the objective of this research was to, uh, to present a mapping effort uh, of different governance initi internet governance initiatives in Latin America and the Caribbean um, in order to better understand uh, how these organizations are uh, working, evolving and framing key components of what we think are um, <clears throat> strategic aspects of, of uh, the internet governance agenda, both uh, reflecting the national interests of these stakeholders, but also in the interaction with the um, international IG ecosystem. Um, and what we did was to do um, um, a research in the different countries involved, um, the different countries who had uh, or who have um, experience with um, national initiatives. Um, and we documented, we couldn't document all the cases that uh, currently have uh, an, an NRI, a National Internet Governance Initiative, basically 
because uh, as, as usual with these uh, research processes, there are sometimes difficulties in accessing the data that one is um, looking to, to document uh, a process. So uh, the cases where we could actually do uh, both the <coughs> interviews and surveys was were in the countries that you can see here, which is uh, which are Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Colombia, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Guatemala, Panama, Peru, Venezuela, Uruguay, Mexico, and Nicaragua. Uh, but this doesn't mean that there are other uh, initiatives in the region, particularly in the Caribbean. And I'm going to mention Barbados and um, and the, and Trinidad and Tobago, which we wanted to document, but unfortunately we couldn't. Uh, get a proper uh, access to um, um, relevant um, informants and, and survey responses. Um, um, please, uh, the, next, the next slide, thank you. So the key dimensions um, that we uh, evaluated in the study are, uh, were, were thematic, that is how um, the internet governance agenda is being reflected in, in each country, structural, uh, in terms of uh, how are these initiatives organized, in terms of um, <clears throat> their uh, committees, their working modes, um, including uh, um, assessing the types of different kinds of secretariats, uh, etc. Then we looked at other institutional uh, two uh, variables for the institutional dimension, uh, mainly uh, the financial and human resources that, that sustain these initiatives. And finally, we looked at the policy impact. Um, or oh, it's very difficult to measure the policy impact of, of internet governance. And this is, I think, one of the key challenges that not only uh, national and regional initiatives face these days, but also at a more global level, it's a discussion that is uh, being addressed uh, in, in, in global uh, spheres and particularly in the, in the MAG at the, at the IGF as well. Um, so the next slide, please. And the effort, um, this research effort is not only concerned with uh, developing a report, which is available online. Um, I didn't include the link to the report in the presentation, but I can certainly share it um, so that um, the organizers of, this, of the webinar can also distribute this material uh, amongst the participants. Um, the full report is available online, but particularly we were also interested in, in developing a project that we thought would be very relevant for, for the region and that we are still looking to uh, expand, um, which is um, a platform where we can map these uh, different initiatives um, according to the different dimensions that, <clears throat> to the four key dimensions and the different uh, variables contained inside them. Um, and they are access that you can access the map uh, which is in english uh, spanish and portuguese at this uh, url that you can see here meglac.org uh, which means mapping internet governance <laughs> in latin america and the caribbean so um, this map current currently reflects the the state of of the research uh, undertaken in in these uh, countries but uh, this the idea is that the platform and we are looking at <clears throat> seeing how to develop uh, to develop a sustainable model for for the platform to become um, a live um, a repository or a live uh, platform to to map understand and, and visualize the the trends and and the evolution of of these um, of these different initiatives so um, we hope that this is not just a static photograph but that it will become uh, a live document which um, Will the which would be available and which the different uh, community members uh, in our region can can certainly use and appropriate for for their own uh, purposes, including and this is something there is a policy dimension to our 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 work, which is not <clears throat> just reflecting an intellectual or an academic concern, but it's also uh, trying to to get to understand what are, what are the the best practices and what are the the accountability mechanisms uh, that um, as um, as a region, we should look forward to uh, to develop, um, and this is also uh, a bit in dialogue with what the um, NRI um, working group at the at the IGF uh, is is also looking to to develop in a way. So next slide, please. So. <clears throat> 
the, the report um, provides some key uh, insights on uh, different aspects and it's, um, it's, it's quite long um, um, and, and, and it provides some um, statistical information about the development of, of, of the initiatives along the several uh, key dimensions discussed earlier. But um, we can draw insights uh, and conclusions regarding the, um, these initiatives looking at uh, firstly, what we define as two waves of, uh, institution, of uh, an institutional development of, of national and regional initiatives in uh, the, the, the LAC region. Um, one, the, the first phase would be the, the preliminary phase where um, we saw uh, in the in initial, let's say, pioneering initiatives, particularly in the case of, of Brazil, um, conducting um, an, an agenda that that was um, well still in its in its early origins um, for, for the region um, and and then we see a kind of a wave exploding beginning to to develop uh, strongly uh, in 2013 2013 2014 um, uh, and until recently where where we uh, can see another uh, phase where um, in between 2013 and 2015, we, 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 consult, we, we see a consolidation of, of, of these uh, initiatives emerging as a pattern. But now uh, what we are seeing is a phase where we are virtually expecting almost uh, all countries in, in the region to, to develop uh, some kind of, of initiative in, in the near future. One of the challenges we had when we were um, <clears throat> doing this research was to say, where do we cross? The, where, where do we draw the line in terms of interpreting what is an, an, a national uh, IGF initiative? And and in this respect, the the work um, provided or, or the or the criteria used by the um, MAG, the IGF NRI working group, um, was was the criteria that 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 we used. Which didn't mean that we did that we didn't also sort of say okay in in some countries we are seeing kind of processes that are maybe not labeled in the same way as a, in our, a, a national internal governance forum, but that we can also consider it a a national <clears throat> internet governance process. But but the but the line I mean is a, is is very thin, and what we are seeing is that uh, the in the way that the IGF NRI working group is defining these initiatives is providing kind of a distinction uh, of what are the, these uh, more formalized structures that um, adhere to this <clears throat> or follow this uh, IGF uh, principles uh, versus uh, initiatives that are still uh, in, in their early phases and, and that have not managed yet to become um, seen as a, as, an, as a proper national IGF. In most cases, sometimes because they don't use the label, but also in other cases uh, because they are uh, still in, in, in a formative uh, kind of um, moment yet. Um, so uh, another big insight, um, I mean, another <laughs> highlight of the report is, is the, the, the influence of the global internet governance regime. Um, and, and what we see is, uh, is that, that the influence is, is, is very strong. Um, in 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 the way they are structured, but particularly uh, in the way they they are institutionally uh, being developed, um, the <clears throat> there is a kind of a restriction in terms of the kind of um, financial resources that these um, national initiatives can obtain uh, to to be uh, activated, and this um, and this kind of prevents. Um, um, I'm not saying prevent, sorry, uh, this is the wrong word, but in a way this um, circumscribes or, or closes the, the gap for um, broader, um, for broader funding sources and, and this imposes some kind of, of limits. Um, we also see that their inspiration is uh, strongly derived from, from processes and from themes that, that are uh, being um, discussed at the IGF and, and, and the LAC IGF. But which um, is doesn't mean that these initiatives are uh, just looking at what's happening outside to then bring it inside. They are they are really, um, and this is to me one of the most important 
uh, valuable assets these initiatives have is that they 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 do provide uh, a context to, for for the discussion of the real issues that <clears throat> that these countries are facing in in terms of of internet governance yet the the international regime uh, bottom line for this second insight and second point the international regime does have a structuring effect on on these initiatives particularly in what concerns the the institutional and the, and the process uh, dimensions the the international regime uh, uh, interestingly enough does not have um, um, a strong uh, way in which to uh, make these initiatives uh, help um, define in a uniform way what multi-stakeholder uh, internet governance means so so we this is i think another very interesting um, finding from the study that that multi-stakeholderism is um, there are some common principles on what it means but actually when when one in the interviews that we conducted uh, we find that there are like strong nuances uh, on on what multi-stakeholder internet governance means in in different national contexts um, looking at the local references um, in our study um, we also looked at the structural characteristics um, as i was mentioning before um, and, and and this is the the key um, one of the key dimensions of, of the influence of the international regime on on the national um, initiatives um, and and I would say that um, what is relevant in the last points of, of the, the that the report provides insights on is is how uh, how they are uh, all in a way looking at um, at really mapping um, what what are the the current um, issues that really have an impact and a, uh, and and a meaning for for the internet communities in in these countries um, in terms of evaluating how the um, how these initiatives are having any kind of impact on internet policy making at the, in the domestic national sphere. Uh, we saw that initiatives that have um, a longer trajectory, that say that they have three or more editions, they are really beginning to, um, to see this as a pressing challenge. They want some, something to, to be really um, come out in, in, in some way. Uh, from these initiatives in in the not in the sense of outcomes of the NRI itself but also in, in but in the way that these initiatives can in a way um, be seen as as um, as an outlet for for um, policy making uh, about internet issues in in the country um, we also saw a worrying trend uh, in in the report uh, regarding the levels of participation um, in in many initiatives we saw that in the during the first initiative there were uh in the, in the first edition of an initiative of a national initiative there were uh, larger numbers of participants and we see some uh, dwindling numbers in in later editions um, this is also uh, an interesting trend which uh, could raise some some signs that um that uh, maybe there should be institutional approaches to to addressing um, why why this is happening and or maybe uh, they are just uh, confirming um, something that uh, we discussed a lot with with my colleagues when we <clears throat> did the research is that maybe internet governance is addressing a kind of elite issues for a, a reduced number of people uh, and and this is becoming an elite uh, discussion. Uh, and and that's uh, the the problem of endogeneity and the problem of um, of not being able to open uh, networks um, our our networks enough in in order to to um, well to embrace diversity and 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 new um, and new participants. So, um, so there is a a responsibility maybe in the design of these initiatives, but also there is an issue of uh, maybe how internet governance is perceived or not. Uh, as, as, as critical or relevant for for the local communities. Um, the next slides, please. <clears throat> um, so here we see the the report has a timeline, but we we also mapped um, in in this chart. This is a screenshot from from the report. I'm just including a, a very few, only two charts, because we we don't have much much more time for this um, presentation now, but. Um, so, so here we see the evolution of, of um, um, 
editions in the different countries that were uh, studied. And we see Brazil hosting seven editions as being the, the largest one. And, and then we see uh, Bolivia, Guatemala and Panama and Venezuela um, organizing just one edition uh, in, in the last year. Well, in the case of Venezuela, it was before that. So um, we, we sti we're still uh, looking at a very emergent process and, and um, I mean, it, many things can happen. So what we are attempting is to try to map a very emergent process in, in, many, uh, in many countries, but it's clearly a trend in, in the region, as I was mentioning at the beginning of the conversation. Next slide, please. Um, and this, um, this, initial, this uh, chart, uh, it looks at uh, what a question that we asked uh, both in the interviews and the surveys, uh, what is the general motivation and mission of, of the initiative uh, in each country? And um, they could answer more than, than one of these. And, and, we, and we saw that <clears throat> the idea of promoting a national space uh, following the international trends in internet governance, as I was mentioning in, uh, previously, I mean, the, the idea that the, the effect of the international discussions about internet governance uh, do need to have an, an echo in, in the national sphere, and this is something that, that the report captures. And we also uh, saw as a second strong motivation um, the idea of, of, of setting up, establishing a, a focal point for discussions around internet governance. Um, well, we saw other uh, the, the the development of multi-stakeholder principles uh, in the exercise of internet governance um, was a, a, a dimension that was not considered as as uh, such a big priority as the other uh, two ones. But it, still, I mean, the, the more than half of the of the initiatives uh, believe that the the multi-stakeholder principles are are essential uh, values that are. Um, motivating these initiatives to exist. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to cut short my, I mean, this is a, the, a very broad outline of, of a study that, that has many more uh, points for discussion, but I think it addresses the, the, main, the main outline of, of what, uh, what we found um, in, this, uh, in this study. And uh, of course, the implications and the uh, generalizations that can be extracted, or on the, uh, on the contrary, the, the country case studies are, are really valuable, um, very interesting, valuable points uh, for this, our discussion. Uh, either here in this webinar or, or in further discussions that we might have at the at the LAC IGF or or other venues. And thank you so much for um, your participation here. Thank you, Karina. Thank you very much for that very instructive expose of the national IG initiatives across the region. Uh, what I have certainly taken note of, for instance are the questions surrounding the definition of a national IGF and the nuance that exists between uh, formalized mechanisms following IGF principles and more formative initiatives. Also the uh, explanation on the waves of uh, IG initiatives, national IG initiatives that is. Um, I found that was very instructive as well. And of course, um, that issue of how global IGF uh, regime provides structure, but at the same time, uh, we do see the dynamics and linkages of national IG initiatives, not only uh, reporting what is happening on the global level, but uh, providing uh, another avenue for internet governance discourse. I'd like to thank you tremendously for that. In the interest of time, we will move right along to our second speaker, Ms. Valeria Betancourt from the Association for Progressive Communications, APC. Valeria is a sociologist with postgraduate studies in communication and culture. She's an activist for human rights on the internet. Her work focuses on public policy and internet governance in the global south. She currently heads the Global Program on Information and Communication Policies, SIP, uh, at APC, and she was an IGF MAG member for the 2010-2013 period, and of course her work in, was recognized in 2012 by LACNIC's Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, Valeria will be focusing a bit on the work of the Global Information Society Watch, 
uh, very interesting platform with a very relevant publication from last year that addresses the issue of NRI squarely. So I'd like to now invite Valeria to um, take control of the session and to give uh, a presentation or an a, a, a explanation of um, her body of work. Thank you, Kevin, and everyone. Um, after, good afternoon, all, and um, it's a pleasure to also uh, be sharing some of our uh, findings in, in terms of the Global Information Society Watch. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite interesting to see that after this quite comprehensive analysis that Carolina uh, has shared with us, that we see some key coincidences. Um, uh, but uh, first, let me see. Um, let me see if I can tell you a little bit more about the Global Information Society Watch for the ones that are not familiar with it. It is a, a tool and a process for collaborative uh, monitoring and implementation of national and international commitments made by governments mostly towards the creation of an inclusive, open, sustainable information society. So in that sense, we conceived this watch and we believe it has become a process and a platform that provides critical civil society perspectives on the state of the information society globally, regionally, and nationally. And one of the values that in, in our review this watch has is that it uh, uh, proposes action steps towards precisely building those information societies in an exercise of deepening democracy and social justice. So each year this watch tackles um, specific themes or topics and in, in 2017 we look at the national and regional IGFs um, our motivation uh, to, to do an edition focusing on, on NRIs is that we recognize that they are a vital element of the internet governance ecosystem. And in fact, we think that they are key to the sustainability and ongoing evolution of collaborative, inclusive, and um, multi-stakeholder approaches to internet and ICT policy development. So in terms of the LAC region, the edition that uh, you might uh, see in the the screen edition uh, uh, includes a report of the mapping exercise that Carolina, the analysis and mapping exercise that Carolina has just presented. It, it contains a summarized version of it. Um, and also a perspective about the LAC IGF. And we have country reports from Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Uruguay, and Venezuela. It is important uh, for me to mention that these uh, reports, uh, the country reports in particular, and the, uh, in, and the perspective about the regional LAC IGF, um, are provided by um, or, or developed by uh, people on the ground. So we uh, not necessarily from the academic pers perspective, but from the um, from from the experience of actually being directly involved in a way or another, either as a convener or as a participant in, in these processes. So those are the perspectives that we uh, uh, compile in this edition. And most of the country reports that we publish uh, uh, in this edition uh, tracked the first-hand experiences of participating in organizing national and regional uh, IGFs. Uh, in, our, in our review, the reports offer a window to understand the challenges in achieving the vision of grassroots participation in internet governance, but it also includes some stock-taking exercises, organizational reviews, interview-based interview surveys, and also stakeholder analysis, and some personal reflections. So it's an it's a interesting combination of per perspectives that you can, around the NRIs that you can find in that edition of this watch. There are some aspects that I would like to highlight, and I think that uh, corroborates and also illustrate perhaps some of the aspects that Carolina has already mentioned. Um, and, and then I find, I find that quite interesting. So um, uh, something that I want to underscore is that also, although we might talk of an IGF community, the participants in this community face sometimes radically dissimilar experiences and context. So socially, economically, politically, in terms of networks they could draw on, or even in terms of capacity and knowledge. 
So as a result, what we see is that um, the agency of these local actors and the ability to influence national and regional uh, internet governance mechanisms was completely different, markedly different. Uh, another issue that I want to highlight is the struggle with uh, inclusion. So uh, the typical core stakeholders found at, at uh, these um, NRIs are governments, of course, the private sector, the technical community and civil society. Uh, and some, in some cases, also academia and media. But within these sectors, we, we see that there, there is uh, there are groups that are frequently absent, and they include women, young people, minorities, and poor, poor and rural communities. So, uh, and, and, and it's important for, for, for us to also mention that uh, further marginalization also occurs when there are issues of language, of lack of knowledge, either um, of the importance of internet governance or the issues around it. And obviously the issue of, of resources also produce um, 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 most exacerbated marginalization. Um, another aspect that we found quite interested, uh, interesting is that um, specific mechanisms are necessary to ensure a balanced participation. So it is not uh, enough to have an open call for participation and expect participants to be multi-stakeholder. So it, it is important to, to, to realize that capacity building and awareness raising are critical to strengthen stakeholder engagement. And uh, some capacity building activities include holding the youth IGFs, for instance, or running pre-events or regional forums, or even holding a special capacity building sessions during the national IGFs, and obviously working with the media in order to improve the coverage of, the, of these issues. We have found in these reports that also a successful forum depends on commonly held ideas of citizenship and democracy. So uh, active participation is dependent on the willingness of the stakeholders to participate, which draws on ideas of agency, citizenship, and democracy. In some, in some countries, there is a sense of apathy that strikes against active participation in, you know, in people-centered policy making over matters that impact directly on citizens' lives. In relation to stakeholders, what the reports uh, are telling us is that the governments can be uh, a stable and unpredictable stakeholder. So as a, as a pivotal stakeholder in national and regional internet governance, this is quite critical because the liberations obviously uh, get uh, richer when we have this uh, uh, so sustained and active participation of this stakeholder. And, and, and if, they are, if they are not, then that, uh, the, the, the whole process of constituting and shaping these national processes get impacted. Um, and also the participation of stakeholders such as the private sector, we found that it, it has to be strengthened in different ways. Uh, in, in, in relation to civil society, uh, uh, it, it was found that civil society has to assess its commitment to openness and to working together. Civil society is dealt with critically um, in a number of, of, of the reports that, that, that we have in this watch and can be a bottleneck to positive progress in some cases. Uh, but also civil society is recognized as having a catalyzing role to play in this regard, especially given their experience in regional and global IGFs. And also, um, um, and also in relation to the type of issues that uh, civil society groups can put on the table for the discussion. Um, obviously, um, there is an anxiety in terms of the impact, the impact and the results of these processes. Um, but uh, showing impact is a, a slippery affair. So despite the recognition that the national and regional IGFs are, are not decision-making forums, questions related to concrete impact of the events remain. So the reports show that it is possible to put some mechanisms in place that are likely to maximize the influence. 
such as holding intersessional meetings or ensuring institutional buy-in into the event, or even through increasing the diversity of stakeholders and issues confronted at, the, at, at, at these events. So concrete follow-up mechanisms are also mooted, uh, such as an impact review that tracks recommendations for the extent to which they were actually implemented or tabled by the relevant legislative bodies. Um, um, Overall, um, the national regional IGFs are seen as a space for addressing imbalances in society. So to, assert, to, to, to some extent, the national IGFs work for countries that already have good governance and working relationships between the stakeholders and are uh, less effective in countries where these are absent. Uh, what is obvious from all the reports that we gather is that uh, running a successful national IGF is difficult. Uh, open, transparent, inclusive, and meaningful discussions are not uh, easy to achieve. Uh, so in relation to the action steps that I mentioned, got that one of the valuable or useful elements of Peace Watch is that it suggests some concrete action steps. The ones that I want, I, I want to mention that were um, proposed or suggested by the authors is that um, uh, there are um, three areas around which action steps are more needed and they include uh, increased collaboration, awareness raising and inclusion participation. Uh, uh, so collaborative actions include a multi-stakeholder reviews of the strengths and also the weaknesses of these processes and establishing national advisory committees on internet governance to promote research and development of internet governance as a whole within the national spheres. And uh, it's also necessary to raise awareness of internet governance in order to increase participation and equal collaboration. And in, in the issue of capacity, uh, it was found uh, as necessary to um, create capacities to engage on internet governance issues to um, uh, among uh, and across all the stakeholder groups. Um, and, and we found that universities had a key role to play on that regard, and also relevant school level programs that could be developed around that could play an important role in that regard. And fun, for, uh, funding resources, financial resources, obviously, is one of the key challenges and emerge and pop up pop it up as, as one of the recurrent uh, um, aspects that restrict and limit participation. Um, so um, uh, these include not only funds for the actual realization of the, of the events, but also to, uh, funds to host preparatory uh, meetings and dynamics ahead of the, of the events. Uh, to help ensure participation and interest among stakeholders and promote an inclusive environment to encourage debate and exchanges between stakeholders. And also to increase the depth and expertise of the face-to-face -face engagements. Um, it was also, also found that the mechanisms should be developed to promote the inclusion of young people, women, indigenous peoples, and people with disabilities. Um, um, and as I mentioned, we believe that this edition of Giz Watch, uh, which I invite you all to uh, look at in detail, offers as an opportunity to reflect on, on time ahead, on the aspects needed to strengthen the national and regional IGFs, also on what changes are necessary and how we can ensure internet governance is addressed from a development and human rights perspectives and approaches, how to make the multi-stakeholder approach more effectively applicable, and how, at the end, better understand what national and regional internet governance means uh, for local actors. So overall, the reports show that the participants in this community face diverse experiences and contexts, as, as I mentioned, and as a, and obviously, that is also reflected in the dynamic that the, these national um, processes establish with the regional and the global processes. 
So I think those are the things that I could like to, to highlight for now and um, would be very happy to um, just hear your questions and, and, and comments. So thank you. Thank you very much, Valeria. I do uh, appreciate this wonderful expose you've given on the Global Information Society Watch and, of course, last year's report, uh, Treating Squarely with NRIs. And um, what really struck a chord with me were the action steps, the three points of the action steps you had mentioned, collaboration, inclusion, increased uh, capacity building and awareness. And I also note that on the topic of inclusion, um, you also um, had a, a similar uh, recognition of, of an issue that Carolina mentioned, and that's um, the, the treating of internet governance um, as an elite or niche area um, because of uh, n not an active uh, focus on promoting diversity um, in the participation in uh, national internet governance mechanisms. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for that. And at this point, we are moving on to an open dialogue segment. And just as a reminder, uh, we have the possibility for our participants to either type a comment or question in the chat, or you can click on the button that says raise hand to be able to speak um, directly. But to lead us along in this segment, I'd like to invite one of my co-conveners, um, Raquel Gatto, to just um, give us a bit more context as to how this segment, what we're doing right now and how it relates to our face-to-face -face, uh, session. So, Raquel? Thank you very much, Kevin, and hi, everybody. Thanks for joining, and thank you so much, Carolina and uh, Valeria, for the introductions. I, I think it was it's an amazing work that both of you uh, has taken and to, to hear again and to being able now to reflect further is really important. And that was the idea, just as Kevin was saying. Um, we Last year, uh, for those that, rem that were in Lakai Jeff, I see some familiar names that were in the Lakai Jeff last year, we organized uh, informally a session uh, with people that are already organizing or that are interested to organize their national IHFs, dialogues, whatever you want to name it. Um, and uh, we were positively surprised with the number of people attending and the, the several issues that were raised. So for this year, the, the LACI draft that is going to take place in almost two weeks from now, uh, we decided to repeat this, uh, this session, uh, keeping one, the possibility of having this as a dynamic, interactional conversation. But then we realized that there are those studies uh, that are already happening and there is content that is out there. And so we decided to start the preparations with a webinar, allowing more time for the discussions because we're only going to have one hour uh, on site, face to face. So let's start now by listening what has been done in terms of mapping, the issues mapping, um, how, what, are, what is surfacing in terms of the NIR's organization. And then, um, and then we are going to have a survey uh, that is going to be out um, soon, early next week. Uh, and uh, the, the people interested in participating can choose their main topics. So whether this is about participation, this is about the organization itself, this is about outreach and communication, this is about the agenda shaping, the themes, the thematic um, approach, or this is about the outcomes, what we do with the discussions and so on. So there are, there are going to be several options. They are built also on those studies. So people can choose what are their hot topics, let's say, or even suggest new ones, right? We, we might forget some. And so the ones that are the most, the top three, top four, um, most voted or most popular will be the ones uh, that we want to bring for the face-to-face -face discussions and then creating more informal discussions, perhaps breakout groups um, and, and organize ourselves around it. So that's the overall plan. I don't want to take much more time. Uh, I think it's important to hear from you guys who 
and made it and join. I see there are already some questions from uh, Didri. You put out some questions. Would you like to uh, pick and, and Jack, Jacqueline Morris also, uh, it's not a question. She's saying that she's uh, willing to help and interested to help to put TT in the research. And I think this is for, uh, we can turn, if you allow me, Jacqueline, into a question also for Caroline, um, how she, uh, how we can integrate the other NRR's experiences into the study, if there is any update um, possibility. And then, Didri, I don't know if you want to jump in. You had several questions, or we can read. Uh, okay, please read. So let's let's go for it. <laughs> um, so the first question um, for Carolina, it's about the. the do we still need to have an accessible definition for internet governance as well as for multi stakeholder? Um, are there any processes in view around it? Then um, it's still for Carolina, it's the, the meetings still tend to have a tech focus. Any more ideas about this? I think this is related to the content shaping. And uh, I have another question that I believe ties to um, now, is the information about these studies available through the Like IGF website? That's for us. So I can reply to that one and then give the mic to Caroline and Valeria. Um, regarding the, the studies, they are going to be published uh, as well as the survey that I was mentioning and uh, the links, right, that are going to be published, the survey and the invitation for the session on site during Like IGF, which will, of course, have remote participation and so on. So Carolina or Valeria, do you want to take on one of those questions? Hi, uh, Raquel. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, no, I'm. I'm as I said, I, I'm, I have a bug issue now, uh, so I'm not able to read the, the chats and unfortunately I'm not um, being able to uh, um, say hi to everyone on the chat room, etc. cetera. But um, in, in, with respect to, to the questions, um, I, I picked um, the second one related with um, the technical um, focus of these meetings, uh, right? One of them was, was, it, was it related with, are, the, are these meetings having, the question is, are these meetings having less um, maybe uh, participation because they tend to focus on, on, on technical issues around internet governance? I don't quite understand the question. And then I would like uh, if you could refresh the, fir the first one again, which... Sure. So, um, Carol, the first one is about the definition. So, are there any processes in views to have a more accessible, or more understandable definition for internet governance and the most or and the most stakeholder term okay um i think you mentioned that at some point and then um the second one i believe you were right and and did we can correct us if not um it is about the the focus more on technical issues and then um mm -hmm. about the um well how you bring the the, the subject for everybody that matters and I see also Nigel has the hands up. So after you reply, Cairo, we go for Nigel. Okay, thank you. I, I'm gonna be uh, brief so as to give time uh, for the other inter interventions, but um, I do think that the, the, that the definition of internet governance is um, still obscure uh, to many. It's still not an easy concept to, to grasp. Um, and 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 I think that with the evolution of of the internet governance debate in the last fifteen years, um, there are communities that have uh, evolved uh, and begun to uh, generate their own uh, spaces for discussion around issues which are definitely interconnected with internet governance, uh, but that uh, maybe they don't see their agenda being reflected in um, in forums such as this one these ones and and for example one which to me is very striking is the the community around open data 
um, I mean, if uh, the open data community and all the open government initiatives and etc. around these issues, I mean, if, if internet governance is not sustained around principles of openness, uh, then uh, we the, that community wouldn't be able even to have this debate. And still we see that there is uh, in, in the case uh, last year, I really, really uh, took uh, time to, to understand why this happened. But in, in, in Argentina, for example, we had a, a national um, OGP, um, uh, a regional OGP conference, which was back to back with the national IGF. And there was really not a single participant that was involved in, in, both, in both meetings. I mean, that, well, there, there was one, I'm sorry. There was one person from civil society who participated in both events and attended both events. I was looking at the speakers List, at the attendance list, etc., and you just saw two communities that were completely, um, um, in, in terms of, of, of principles, in terms of themes, that have so many uh, points in, in in common, and yet they they wouldn't. The, the, in particular, the open open data initiative um, movement is not seeing the value in participating in internet governance discussions. And this is just an example, but I think it, it really shows how sometimes the, the way internet governance is framed, understood, and publicly communicated is, is really um, showing some, some challenges to, to embrace more, more, more participation and a renewal in, in the debate. And, and in terms of the technical approach, uh, my, I, I think that uh, it's, it's also partly, I think, uh, answered in, in my, in what I said before, uh, but I don't necessarily think that a national internet governance forums and initiatives are have such a strong technical focus, uh, technical understood in, in, I mean, speaking about in the internet architecture and, and, and technical principles. Um, in, in that respect, I don't think uh, that is certainly the, the case for the, the agenda of, of uh, national IGFs in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you very much, Carol. And I'm sorry, my internet connection got dropped for a, a little bit, but I, I, I think I heard um, you replying all the questions. The, the last one before we go to Nigel, um, is also Jacqueline Morris wants to insert the, the Trinidad and Tobago experience. Um, is there any possibilities to update or, or how you're considering those? It, it would be, it would be wonderful. It would be wonderful. Um, and uh, let's get in touch about this, uh, Jackie, so that, um, this can be, uh, reflected, uh, both in the report, but also in the, in the platform, which is what we are looking, uh, for, for this to become a, an online um, uh, platform for, for Latin America and the Caribbean. Thanks. Um, so let's go to Nigel. Kevin, Janina? Yes, uh, Raquel, we're going to give the word to Nigel now. Nigel, you can speak now. Go ahead. Nigel, do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you, but can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Go ahead. All right, wonderful. Um, I'll be very quick. First, I'd like to congratulate LACNIC on, on this pre-event. I think it's a really good idea to, um, to focus the discussions in the upcoming uh, LAC IGF. Um, we ourselves have tried to do it via uh, an online discussion forum, but I think this is a very good idea as well. Also like to um, thank Carolina and, Val and Valeria for their presentations. Um, quite informative and um, very instructive with respect to the global IG Information Society watch and, and their reports actually. Um, what I would want to suggest is to um, Carolina in particular, is that it's very, I think you can very easily get four more data points into your study um, by uh, getting into the Caribbean. We have Trinidad and Tobago, we have Barbados, whose IGF is going on as we speak, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we have the Caribbean IGF. I don't think I saw any other regional fora in your list. It was just, it just seemed to be national fora. fora. And um, Jacqueline volunteered to um, help with the research. And I think Jacqueline would be 
uh, in a very good position to work with us to help you get the, the additional information you might need from the Caribbean points. So um, I just wanted to suggest that that would help to enrich your research. Uh, actually, one last thing I'll say is that the you might find in, in particular with respect to the Caribbean IGF that the the motivations might have been somewhat different from, from the others. Um, so I, I think that might be interesting for what you're studying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Um, very useful. I was taking note of, of this and um, I, of course the, the study will certainly benefit from all the input that uh, Jacqueline might provide. Okay. Thanks, Nigel, and thanks, everyone. Um, I don't see any more questions. If I'm not mistaken, there is no other hands up. Um, we started a little bit, so we're also uh, already past the hour. But um, I want again to thanks Valeria and, and Carolina. I think this is a conversation that is just starting. Um, so we will have... Uh, many chances to, to do the updates and the information sharing. And I hope during La Jeff we can also go further. Uh, and please keep an eye on the survey. We're going to circulate pretty soon. Um, and so you can also contribute on what are the key topics that you would like to see discussed or those are the, the, the issues that you need to um, to talk about. Uh, and I don't know if our con convener also, Nacho Estrada, this is a technical community effort. So we are together with LACNIC, uh, Isaac, and, and LACTLD organizing this, um, this sessions. And uh, Nacho has been very quiet. I don't know if you want to say final words and, um, and so we can wrap up. Thank you, Raquel. No, just to thank everybody to, to attend, to be here. And thank Carolina and Valeria also for presenting their tremendous work on this aspects and um, looking forward to having you again some of you again tomorrow in the spanish session and to meet you uh, in our session that will be ha happening in at, at the lack gf event in one side okay thanks everybody uh, kevin uh, do you want to say a final word or you do the wrap up and close <laughs> Uh, thanks again, Raquel. Um, thanks to everyone for being here. Um, definitely uh, your participation, the attendees, uh, that was critical for us uh, to have this successful session. And uh, do look out for the information that uh, Raquel and others have mentioned. We'll be placing all links um, to the reports, um, namely the Mapping National IG Initiatives in Latin America by Carolina and also the GIS Watch uh, report. Um, Valeria has already shared the URL in the chat, um, but we will simply replicate all of that. And as Raquel has said, um, we will be publishing a survey early next week. And we really appreciate your input into that survey to really capture uh, some of the aspects that we should uh, work on um, within the region. So thanks once again, and do have and enjoy the rest of your afternoon, uh, wherever you may be. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye, just, everyone. Bye. Just to answer, Deidre, who asked uh, if we will also share the slides, uh, the answer is yes. In the same link we are sharing now, it will be uh, published the webinar and also the slides, so you can see everything. So thank you, everybody, for participating. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.